Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the La Bologna Valley Bromeliad Society Zoom presentation featuring Nason Gazanu. I'm Ken Simpson, the Vice President. Welcome to our members and guests. Thank you all for joining us. Paul has muted all participants for this presentation. Adjust the view on your screen in your Zoom window for either speaker or gallery. Nathan will take questions after his presentation with you using the chat feature on Zoom. We will tell you when he is ready to receive your chat questions. You may unmute yourself if he picks your question during your question only. When finished, please mute yourself again. Club affairs will be discussed after the presentation. If you would like to receive announcements of our future meetings, please email your name to the following. We thank you, Nathan, for the time and effort you spent on making this presentation for us. Nathan began collecting orchids at the age of five. By age seven, he was on TV explaining how to take care of them. At 17, he received a collection created in 1979, consisting of 700 bromeliads from an important botanist of Rio de Janeiro, Ivo de Azevedo Pina, who had collected many for science for the first time. Now, Nathan is all of 27 years old with a botanical collection of 1,700 plants with data, mostly bromeliads, but also orchids, aeroids, cacti, gisneriads, amaryllids, and the genera, genera Peperomia and Neomarcia. Neo. Some of the plants in this collection are no longer found in nature, so it's important to maintain them as a way to enable study of the genetics of these plants and therefore their conservation. Our club is a nonprofit organization. Attendance at our Zoom meeting presentations is free to all bromeliad enthusiasts. If you would like to support our efforts, donations can be made to offset our Zoom presentation. You can use your phone camera and take a picture of the PayPal link or the QR code below to make a donation. Also, Gene will place on the chat this information so during the presentation, you can look at it. And Nathan, I'm going to stop the share and you can start your share. First, I would, um, I'm really happy to talk for you all and try to explain a little bit of my work. That's for me, I don't like to say work because to me, I spend almost all my life inside of the greenhouse trying to take care of everything that I have. And it's, when I say that I have a, like a, more than a thousand, a thousand seven hundred plants, uh, it's a, an idea about what I have because I have more. But the point is, even me, I don't know how many really I have, but definitely is more than that number. So let's take like that. And um, the collection started in when I was um, the bromeliad the collection. It started when I was um, when I had 17 years around that, and uh, I started to be. Is some problem with the audio? Okay, cool. Um, no. Okay, so um, I when I was around 17, I met Ivo. Ivo, in the same moment that we met, um, we, we, we had a connection. And um, the point is, uh, with time, um, and getting, uh, starting to be a good friend of Ivo, um, he started to give me 10, 100, 200 plants. And when I saw myself, I was with 700 plants. And like, I don't know what, what, how to take care, how to organize a collection. And during that time, I started to, to understand, to learn more about, and like that, I, I visited the group of Barry 
And um, since that, I'm, I'm, I'm there and uh, enjoying all the information that we can find there. Because on the time, I was that I was in that queue with bromelades. So, um, yeah, let me, yeah. So uh, in this picture, I'm in the greenhouse number one, where I have some plants of my, uh, some plants of my collection where I need to be more at more to have more attention because they need a special condition of humidity, luminosity, um, uh, things like that. So there I have a special condition to keep the, uh, this, those type of plants. And then I, even like that, um, I have plants from Northwest Brazil and others from South Brazil. So when I'm talking, I'm saying that uh, the plants that came from that those, those regions need special conditions and uh, I'm put them all together. So the point is how to find the middle point to have the better cultivation as possible. And um, that is the, the magic, to find the middle point to have all of them together. In my hands, I have a Sininja that is also a part of my, my archives. And uh, I'm also a collector as uh, was wrote in the past of just the Riyadh too. And I gave the last month one uh, a presentation for the Jesuit Society too. So if you guys would like to, to watch, just send me a message. And um, so this is how I try to organize the greenhouse. It looks, it looks like a mess, no? Yeah, it really looks like a mess because it's almost jungle. I have there cactus, I have orchids, I have amaryllis, I have almost all of the genus that I'm a collector all together. So it's very, very difficult to keep all of them together. Uh, so sometimes it's definitely comprehensible that we can have some problems related with fungus, with insects, by the point that it's, uh, it's a lot of plant in the same area. And sometimes the, the conditions of um, um, the wind, the condition that the lenses in the special bromeliates need in the habitat is not really well, um, it's not really appropriate to inside of the greenhouse. So as I'm trying to say, since I started, the point is to try to find the, media, the middle point to organize the greenhouse. So in this, in this picture, we can see really well how I do that because um, in the first step, if I can say like that, um, the highest point, point, I have, for example, stigmatodons, vrisias, um, some tilanzias that need a special, um, a lot of luminosity, some, so the, that, that, those ones I put in the first, first step like that, they have uh, more luminosity. So, and uh, just up um, in the first, in the first part, just down of the, the grill, um, there are a lot of orchids there and um, some also bromeliates from the state of, for example, Spirito Santo. The conditions in Spirito Santo uh, uh, are the worst when we talk about humidity. So there is a good place to keep uh, little plants that need special conditions of humidity. So, uh, Inside of the greenhouse, the two greenhouses that I have, uh, there are a lot of microclimates, a lot of, and the artists uh, try to identify where is the correct one to put the correct plant. Yeah, so it's the greenhouse number two, where I have a lot of ecmeas, bilberges, and um, some plants that came from Roberto Google Max, 
from the, with the uh, in the trip with Margaret Me, Miss Margaret Me, um, and also from Kautsky, from uh, the biggest part came from Nivo, but from uh, from a lot of people, uh, different collectors, and the point is with time knowing get, uh, starting to be friends with other collectors uh, they saw me um, maybe with the idea the perspective if you can say like that uh, of a person that maybe could follow some some work that they did in life so oh a lot of them cannot more have the plants in, at the at home, so when they they saw me, so like really wanting to to take care to organize and things, and very interested to do that, they started to give me and give me and give me. So the the, the situations like you guys can see, <laughs> almost a jungle. This is the greenhouse number two. This is a very special plant to me. This is a very special, as I said in the last presentation that I gave, from the, the director of the, of the International Society of Jews and Riyadh, asked me in the last part of the presentation, uh, Nathan, uh, if we ask you, no, sorry, it was another person, but it also um, some type of director, he asked me, Nathan, if I could ask you, uh, which one you more you like more? I came really close to the microphone and I said I cannot answer your question because the plants are here and me, and uh, they're gonna get very very uh, stressed with me if I if they hear that I'm saying that. So uh, definitely I'm uh, I'm that crazy for talking with the plants, but we don't make attention. So um, this uh, those challenges. Uh, here we have actually um, two, just two plants. Uh, in the, your left image, um, we can see uh, two specimens that were, were, was collected in nature in 1979. Um, and um, it was um, because sometimes when we, uh, we had special, a uh, strong wind, in the area, we can find some species uh, in the in the the habitat of Chilanza Graziella, and Chilanza Graziella go, grows in a special condition uh, in a very high mountain, in the most high point point of the mountain, and sometimes when we have, when we have strong wind and strong rain, you can find the plants sometimes in soil. And um, definitely it's not possible to collect because the place is a reserve. So you guys, me, I cannot go there and collect. Uh, and collect. So you're going to ask me, oh, then how do you have that? As you guys can see, uh, the plant was collected in 1979. It's older than me. And Ivo collect that there. And he, uh, since that, that, we have the plants for 42 years. And since 1979, it grew just one more plant. So it's really difficult to produce new plants. Really, really difficult. And the, the point, the uh, bad point about that is when we visit the habitat of Chilanzi Graziella, we it's we almost don't find the little plants growing in the rock. So uh, it's a sign that there is some problem um, in the reproduction of the plant. Something has happened that is making some trouble between the reproduction of the plant. Yeah, in that picture, we can see one of the species that I have in collection since 1979 producing for the first time in 42 years two plants. So it's really hard. Yeah, this is Tilanzia brachpilla, and collected in the Inselbergs 
of the city of Rio de Janeiro in nine, um, 1908. Um, and since that never grew another species, another plants, never, never. So uh, to, to produce, to have more plants, the only possibility would be uh, to make uh, to make seeds. And the point is, since 1979, I can tell you guys that uh, I don't have on my archives that it flowered. So how? The point is, Chilangia brachyphila um, is not really well adapted to the conditions of the high mountains of Rio de Janeiro, where I live. So since that, since I have the collection or where I can, until where I can uh, see in the archives of my collection, I don't see that it flowered less than 15 years ago. All of this, th those specimens I still have in collection and almost without development. Yeah, this is Chilangia organizes. And um, I visited a friend of mine in another city, three hours far from here. And he had a, a, a plum of um, Chilangia organizes that he cultivated since uh, 2000. And um, I saw the plant and never before I saw it in organisms. So exactly in the moment that I saw for the first time organisms, something inside me, because I'm saying, uh, I ne never before I saw in person the Ario um, organisms. And I, exactly in the moment that I saw for the first time, I, I, I started to, to sprint and uh, no, I can't believe that I found it. And uh, so the, the owner of the the the, the 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 owner of the greenhouse came to me. My friend said, "Oh, what is that? What? Why you are screaming?" And um, I, I I said, "Just uh, because it, I never saw that before." And so he just took some part of the plant, put it in my hands, and okay, now you have it. Go, go, please. Another day you come back. <laughs> so, um, since now, um, I, I, maybe two years I have to learn organizes. And from the group of uh, organizes, Elbergeri, um, Kautsky, um, Chilanzia organizes, I can tell you guys in, that in my conditions is one of the best plants to produce new, 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 to grow new plants. And to me, it's very, very, very uh, strange because when I make a comparison with all others from this, the, uh, that the uh, Chilanza organizes is Afenis, um, it's, it's not possible to make a comparison when we talk about uh, to produce new plants. Organizes grow grows really a lot, really a lot. This is two variations of uh, Chilanzia Roger. And uh, what is incredible is when you visit each insulbert of Rio de Janeiro, you gonna find a variation of a Roger. Each, it's all, it's all when we talk about Taxonomy um, until now it's a Roger, but with different variations. And those all variations are not until now really accepted. So they 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 take all of them as a Roger. Me, by the point that I'm not a botanist, I don't take like that. So I have all of them like as a special Roger as uh, uh, another species, and um, because uh, with all of the, the plants that I have, I have five different uh, ecotypes of a Roger, and all of them almost 
it's I, I could say that it's impossible to to say oh it's a Roger oh it's a Roger no it's not possible really not possible um, the plant grows totally different uh, the, the, how the leaves grows and definitely it's not the point when we talk about taxonomy because the flower is the most important point but uh, um, when we take the situation like that um, actually like talking about conservance is it gonna appear and gonna not appear it's gonna be that the other population by the point that is the same species that is not really what I'm talking about um, it's not more important really important to make the conservance of that population in case for example we have the, uh, it's necessary to make some new street, some new road. And uh, so that is really important to talk about different variations and stop to like to, in my opinion, to, to put a lot of species in the same that were before uh, different species in the same species, but with different variations or in what I can see now in Brazil, in a lot of cases of taxonomy in Brazil, it's it's happened. So we are lost in a lot of taxons because um, people are taking at like the same. And the point is, they are not making genetic comparison comparison with others. They are just taking them the flower the. the um, look in the flower and it's not uh, genetic so my opinion is that we should do with genetic so this is um, in your left we can see the most common uh, ecotypus of Eroge in comparison with the material of the holotypus of Chilansia uh, Eroge variety Mino that I have here the material because who found, uh, who disco, um, described Alaranje for a variety Mino was Ivo. This is the Chilanzia Durati uh, variety Saxatilis, collected in 1981 in West Brazil. Um, that plant in the air in the habitat is not that common. And uh, actually, the, the, we don't have, we have definitely a lot of expeditions that went there to, to study bromeliades, but uh, I could say that West Brazil, Central West Brazil, West Brazil is the, um, the um, holy grail when we talk about new plants to be discovered. So, um, that plant, uh, since 19, uh, 1981, never produced new plants. And that is the case, the point, when uh, something bad can to make something good. Um, four years ago, a uh, beetle ate the, the uh, almost killed the plant. And with time, it grows another, it uh, started to produce two plants. And before, for over almost 40 years, I didn't have, um, the collection didn't have uh, more than one, you no. Know? But because one uh, beetle tried to eat the plant, we have two years. Um, this is a Tilansia, as a, um, a new species that it's been started in from the state of Rio de Janeiro and uh, it will be close uh, also from the high mountains. The populations of that plant are not big, they are not big and the, probably probably it, we could see we could take that as already endangered. This is the new Chil Chilansia, Chilansia jequiensis, 
and um, that plant uh, is a red. Um, the science already knows that plant for over than ten years, but last last this year, um, a German came here and collected the specimens and make the comparison, and they he saw that was a new species, but that plant for us in Brazil is not really really um, something new, but. Um, that German guy was the first one to collect and make the real comprehension. And like that, he saw that was a new species. I went, I read, visited that area, that habitat. And this is my specimen. Um, and the, the, in your right, we can see how is the population of Chilanzia Jekinsis is really, really, really big, really big. It grows like making big, big clouds. This is a curious variation of Chalanzo Gemini Flora. Um, Ken asked me in the last meeting that we, um, we had to organize the, our presentation if uh, the condition for the, um, the leaves just have spots during the flower season. And no, that variation of uh, Chilandia, Gemini Flora, all here have spots, it's punctata, I could say like that, leaves are punctata, all here, all here. And uh, we can find that uh, variation, that um, plants like that with so many, um, with so punctata uh, easily. That was the first time that I saw until I have that plant for a friend of mine that gave me. This is Chilanzia Dura. And um, that one also was collected in 1979 by Ivo. And um, in the left picture, we can see uh, the plant almost when it was collected in nature. Uh, and uh, now, few years ago in my my collection. This is Chilangia stricta rupicola, rupiculos, variety rupiculos, and uh, that variation, that stricta rupicola, um, we don't have, we don't have, um, we didn't find yet really uh, big populations of stricta. Definitely, stricta is a normal, a common, very common plant. But the, the one that is rupiculous in Northwest Brazil, it's really, really, really hard to find. And the point is that when we make a comparison with the plant that we find it growing in the trees all around, it's totally different. I'm talking about flowers, I'm talking about the plant, I'm talking about all points. It's totally, totally different. And usually, rupiculous plants, uh, when we, we make comparison um, with the ones that are not growing as rupiculous, just close by the ones that is growing, is growing by, uh, like rupiculous, the, the ones that is growing in the rocks, they they are not really big, and the point is, the ones the population that we find in that rock, they are bigger, to almost two times in comparison with the ones growing uh, in the trees all around the area. So this is Chilanzia itatiens. Um, that plant have a, a special history, uh, history because a friend of mine, uh, the botanist, uh, was in the area looking to another plant that he was trying to, to, to find because it was lost for a lot of years, a lot of years. And the, in the middle of the expedition, trying to find the, that plant that is lost, he found a new species. That is Chilanzia itatiensis. But the one that he was really looking for, he didn't find. 
Yeah, this is Tilandia. Um, the details of the inflorescence of Tilandia itatiensis. And those pictures, the, the one that uh, was used to, to make the publication, the, the description of the plant. And the next picture. Yeah, sorry, I didn't, I didn't make attention. In the right picture, uh, you guys can see my specimen that my friend, that is the botanist who described that found the plant, sent me. Uh, his name is Everton Illo. That's why I can have mine because it's totally restricted. It's not possible to collect no species, no seeds, nothing. Um, I just can have mine because my friend uh, gave me trying to make, um, to try to find the better condition to keep the plant uh, for a future project for a conservance. Like that, I can have because I have the, the number of uh, uh, the, the, day, the dates that it, when he collect the plant, all the tales from the plant, like that, I can have the plant because it's, as I said, forbidden. This is Chilanzia tomifolia, very surinamensis. And also who gave me was Evertonilo, my friend. Um, that variation we can find in the Northwest Brazil. And it's definitely more dark. It's almost black. It's almost black, really. But by the point that I keep all of the plants inside, the, I mean, the Chilanzias, some of them I don't keep, but just because I didn't find the correct way to keep them in cultivation. But uh, Chilanzia tonifolia var surinamensis need a special uh, condition talking about sun, to full exposure to the sun. Um, I don't like to keep mine like that. Yeah, this is Chilanzia uh, afnis carmine. They all say that it's carmine, but I'm sure that it's not. I'm sure that it's not. And I won't write that it's carmine. It's something related to carmine. Um, the plant's totally different. We could talk about um, some, something that happened in the past that cut the relation of the populations in a very, very far past. Uh, and like that, in a very far past, the populations, by the point that something happened, ge geological, climate, whatever, and um, it, the, the connection cut it, and like that maybe um, had some development in the, the, the plant. Well, no, we had different plants, different species. Um, my friends here in Brazil take the plant like carmine, but I won't. Just making, uh, letting it very clear that I don't accept the, the taxon carmine for that piece. Yeah, this is a variation of Chilanzia tenbifolia that we found in South Brazil, all uh, around the area of the Iguazu Falls, and um, that variation is very, very uncommon. We cannot find in the area usually uh, that the color of inflorescence um, almost um, like pinky. And uh, it's, not, it's not really common to find that color in the area. I mean, talking about that that special plant. We have other tenuifolias more in the south, uh, south but in the mountains of south, uh, part of Rio Grande do Sul, that have the pink inflorescence and pink flowers, but totally different to that one. And that the way that grows looks like exactly uh, um, some variation of Araujé. This is a huge, a giant, giant Atlantis stricta. 
uh, it's very, 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 very difficult to find some specimen with that size. Look how it big. Whoa, it's very big, very big. It's far, far, far the biggest that I saw in my life. It's uh, when I'm, I just put it my, my hand to have an idea of the size of the plant. It's two times my hand. It's really big. This is another giant one. It's a Chilanza termifolium, uh, very, very albobracteata. Unfortunately, I had flower for that plant just two times, and both both times I was I was on trips and I didn't take picture. And the, that plant uh, was from a friend of mine that I also inherited his collection, and um, unfortunately he, di he died. Um, Last year, his name was Hobson Lopes. Uh, he was a botanist, geograph, um, biologist. He, he was most everything. And uh, he gave me his entire collection before dying. He was a good friend of mine. And uh, during the, plant, the time that he had the plant, never, never the plant, almost for 10 years, the plant flowered with him. And when he gave me exactly in the same year that he gave me, the plant flowered with me. And he got very, very, very stressed at the water, what I did with the plant for, for have flowers. It's another giant one, um, Stricta. That Stricta is from the state of Rio de Janeiro, it's from the high mountains of Rio. And um, it's also very big. The other one, came from a, a beach area. So um, that plant, the other one, the giant one, stripped them. That one gr was growing like um, uh, in the middle of the leaves, uh, in the base of the trees. So really, really strange for a stricta. I mean, talking about the conditions where usually I we find here strictness. This one is also very strange one. Uh, this is Chilean district, uh, very tallescent uh, from the southwest Brazil, uh, from an air, uh, um, our area that we call like uh, it's um, the border the between uh, Caatinga. It's almost almost a savanna, our savanna, and um, Caatinga, the rainforest also. So was the connection between uh, Caatinga and Atlantic uh, rainforest. So it's a special area, and that one, that still is stricter, it grows totally different than all other Chilean districts that I have in my archives. Um, I have strictest from extremely north is Brazil to extremely south Brazil. So when I'm when I'm talking uh, about um, what is, uh, it's really different for a uh, strict, it's because it's really different different for a strict. And um, look the 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 inflorescence, look the flowers. My friends, they are saying that probably it's gonna be a new fish. That I prefer to be in, in silence. Uh, I'm gonna leave that for the botanist. <laughs> yeah, uh, but what they are saying is that in maybe in some, so, uh, uh, some so a time ago, Something happened maybe uh, in the genetic of that plant, that Chilean district, the color set, we have um, some cross with some type of tenuifolia. I know the area and we didn't, we, we can't find, I didn't at least, find uh, 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 Chilean tenuifolia in the area. Just, uh, for more um, 
if we go north, we can find more, some Tamifolias. But in that population of Tamifolia, um, sorry, in that population of Chilans district, we can find, I didn't find Chilans and Tamifolia to, to, be, to say, oh, yeah, maybe it's some, some cross with some hybridization um, with Chilanzia Tamifolia. This is Chilanzia candida. Chilanzia candida is a very common species of Chilanzia in the area where we find it. Uh, very common. It grows like hell. It grows like when we find the tree, it's full of them, full. In some cases, um, if they, for example, if the tree is, is um, dead, we see all, 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 all. I have a friend of mine that he described me that. Nathan, the tree was dead, but it was still alive. And because it was, it was full, full of Tilanzia candida, it grows a lot, really a lot. And um, I could say that if we don't make attention to candida in our cultivation, uh, in our um, greenhouses, it can become a problem. Yeah, this is Chilanzia didistica. Uh, that specimen uh, was collected in the West Brazil, Central, well, sorry, I, I wrote it wrong. Um, and uh, Central West Brazil and um, that specimen, that specimen, we can see development of the plant uh, during almost six years. It doesn't grow really well. It doesn't produce a lot of new plants, but it's going pretty well here. And also inherited the plant from my friend that's, that died last year. Uh, he collected in one of his trips in the West Brazil. That one also he collected. Um, this is a Chilanzia goyazensis. Uh, that is exactly the point that I was talking before. That potents a mess with the, the, the taxonomy, and they put Chilanzia goyazensis as um, the same as Didistica. I won't do that. I won't. I won't accept that. So here you guys are seeing the plant as goyazensis. When we talk about the development of the plant, it's almost the same. Unfortunately, I cannot show you guys the flower of the plant because never flower here. <laughs> yeah, this is Silencia Bonita. Uh, last picture uh, was by uh, Leonardo Vercier that is a very important botanist from Brazil. That plant in the special was one of the, the, the last ones to be described. And um, it's a very strange plant when we talk about uh, Tilanzias from Brazil. It's very, very, very strange one. Uh, in your right, you can see my, my plant. This is uh, the habitat of Chilanzia bonita. Chilanzia bonita grows in, in, some, in some rocks in, in a special area, and uh, it's extremely, extremely rare. It's microendemic, extremely. It, they found that just in, in one mountain, probably it's possible to find uh, some some or in some other mountains in the area, but until now they didn't just in one mountain. So um, I also have the, my specimen because a person that it was studying the plant, the the, the tax on the species gave me like that. I can have because it's impossible to find to buy the plant uh, in in Brazil. Uh, this is Chilanzia Barrosoi from West Brazil too. Uh, it grows uh, like rupiculos in the in the mountains of um, um, 
Pirinópolis, um, in the city of uh, the, the place, the name of the place is Pirineus. And um, it's also extremely rare to find. Nobody have that plant, or maybe five collectors have that plant in collection now in Brazil. And some of them have, uh, but uh, illegally, illegally because nobody is selling that plant, that, uh, that plant legal on a way correct. So almost all plants that you guys, not almost probably all plants that you guys are gonna see, gonna be illegal. Yeah, we can see here two variations of Chilanzio Bergeri from different areas of Brazil. Uh, in your left, we can see uh, a specimen from the mountains of um, Spirito Santo, and in your right, we can see a specimen from the north, uh, the, the central part of the state of Bahia in the northeast of Brazil. This is a um, variation of colors between uh, um, the variation of colors of a, a, a plant that um, to me it's another taxon, it's another species. Uh, botanics are they didn't they didn't decide what they want to do with the, that plant uh, if they want to put that as Milagrensis, if they want, to, they want to put that as semifolia. Um, so that one, uh, both both plants uh, came from the same rock, but and the population, for some reason, don't mix. Don't mix. It's so strange. Why? How it happened? How it happened because uh, the color of the, the the plant, talking about leaves, it's one. We can find one clump full, a big clump, all with um, um, leaves more red, and uh, sorry, the leaves more uh, green, and that one that is the one in your right grows not having uh, a, a relation, not uh, touching, not touching the one in your right. And um, we can find in the middle, we can't find in the middle of the population some, uh, something, some, something between that. So we see in the same rock something with uh, some clump with uh, leaves more green, another with leaves more uh, less green and the ones with leaves less green is the one in your life uh, left with color of the flowers totally different also when we compare to the one in your right it's very strange in that case in special i never saw something like that before talking about all the populations that i read saw that i read visited Talking about Chilanzia, Italbensis, talking a lot about uh, Chilanzia strict. Uh, no, it's, I, I don't understand why. Uh, because it, in all others, we can find it off, totally mixed, totally mixed. And for that one, it, it's not possible. I just, in the, in the entire rock, we didn't see. This is the Chilanzia Kautsky, a very, very small one. Um, this plant is from 1981 to, and uh, from the state of Espirito Santo, from the high mountains of uh, Espirito Santo. And also very difficult for me to produce new plants. This one, I wanted to share with you guys because I don't know what it is. <laughs> I wanted to share it to you guys because uh, the history of the plants very curious because I visited a friend of mine and I never accept to receive plant to my collection without data. Never, never. It's some rule for my archives. It's a rule for me. 
I don't accept to receive plants without information, data, provenance, whatever, how you guys want to call to say if you think. And uh, I never accept. And immediately, in the same time that I saw the plant, I said, Jesus, what is that? I never saw that before. I, said, oh, I, I thought with me, it, is that Leona Miana? But I didn't, I didn't say I was with, it was with me. And uh, I was like, I never saw that before. I don't have idea what it is. And my friend said, oh, take that for you. You're going to take more, a, a, be a better care of that than me. And I asked it, but from where it is? And he said, I don't know, David. I said, how? You have such important plant without provenance. You want to make me crazy. Um, because the idea when we, it was starting to, to grow, to produce flowers, uh, is maybe it's a Leonomiana. And by the point that the habitat, the real habitat of Leonomiana is lost, we, we, we like, I was in front of the possibility to find the real Leonomiana habitat. And he, another time, gave me like, uh, to me, uh, made me lost about the, the habitat that could be a Leonomiana. For two times in history, they lost the habitat. And um, I, I was really, really crazy about that. And then he said, Nate, I said, I, I can I can't accept that because I'm going to have a problem in my collection. I'm going to look that. And no, no, no. I, I can't have that because it's really important to me to don't have uh, plants without provenance. So there was a mess in my archives. And uh, I can, I can. Um, and I um, said, okay, Neta, um, take that, please. And uh, I'm going to help you to, to find the, the, the habitat. And he promised me that we're going to make an expedition. Arena to try to find the habitat of that plant. I yo is can you guys hear me well? Yes. Yeah, yeah because uh, so I appeared some message to me that my connection is not really good. Um, so yeah, okay. So he gave me the plant. And um, now I'm with that mission that in the next, uh, uh, next year, or maybe still this year, uh, we are going to make uh, an, uh, an expedition to the area where he usually he visited in the, in the past to try to find the population of that plant. Because the point is, he had three of the same one. So what it means? It means that he could collect just one, but he collected three. And by the point that he is, uh, he studied botanist and um, the conservance, he wouldn't take three specimens if he found just three. So what I'm saying is the math is probably the uh, population is much bigger it's really big, really, really, really big. And we probably gonna find the population of a new plant because no, I don't believe that it's a little near. This is the Chilean Chapeuensis from the Northeast Brazil, from the state of Bahia to, um, from the area that we call Caatinga, as I said, Savannah, our Savannah. This is a natural hybrid between Chilanza strict and Chilanza tenuifolia. Um, that plant grows like tenuifolia, produces flowers like stricta, and with the size of plant like the stricta of the same region. Chilanza prunosa. Um, that population is from Rio de Janeiro, from the high mountains of Rio de Janeiro, from the city of um, Santa Maria Madalena. 
it needs a special um, condition to of it needs a lot of wind, a lot of wind. Sometimes I have I have problem problem with that plant about fungus. That is the worst plant in my cultivation to have problem with fungus. It's it makes me really crazy to, to keep the plants in the middle of the others. This is Silenzia retrosa, in the state of Minas Gerais, in the place that we call uh, the name is Diamantina. And um, the, the orchid is a uh, Cattleya graduary. This is mine, a mine specimen. Um, growing quite different, but because I don't give the luminos that it needs. Because as I said, I'm really worried with my plants about the insects, whatever more. And uh, I really, I'm really worried with uh, the relation with of my greenhouse with uh, another animals. And uh, unfortunately, I I need to use chemistry on my plants, but it's something that I don't like to do. And uh, I have a lot of uh, frogs inside of my greenhouse, and um, so I prefer to keep the plants inside of the greenhouse, trying to make a. a um, find the middle point, as I said in the beginning of our presentation, uh, then choose a lot of chemistry and expose my plants to, to the sun and uh, lossen uh, uh, in another uh, way a lot of um, insects or frogs, wherever. I like the relation between that. So I won't do, use a lot of chemistry. This is one of the most incredible person that you gonna know in your life. If you guys have the possibility to come to Brazil and say, oh, I want to meet somebody, you don't need to meet Nathan because it's not really important. But uh, uh, Leopoldo Vitek is wonderful. Well, Leopoldo is gonna be one of the best person that you're gonna meet in your entire life for sure, 100%. Leopold helped me a lot with my, my archives, my collection. He gave me everything that you can, guys can imagine. Everything, everything, all attention, all plants that I desired. He, he's really, really, really fantastic. And when we talk about plants, he's, the Papa. When we talk about uh, uh, geology, he's a specialist. When we talk about entomology, he's wonderful. He, 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 he's fantastic in everything that he touched. And Leopoldo is a good friend of mine. And uh, in that picture, we can see Leopoldo with uh, his plant, a Chilangia Vitek, that is, whoa, X. Extremely rare, extremely rare. Uh, Chilanzia Vitek, we can find in just one mountain in the, in the, in, if, in the west part, I can say, I can think that I can say like that, of South Brazil. It's really, really, really rare, really rare. This is, one of my, my specimens of Chilangia Vitek. Uh, it's going pretty well here. It's not uh, the problematic one. Uh, it didn't flower yet, but I'm sure that it's soon it, I'm going to have flowers of it. Chilangia toropiensis, uh, also a very common species. Yeah, not common, it's quite rare, but in the size of the populations are very big, very big, very big. We can find them in, in a lot of mountains, but um, the, when we find the populations, they are big. Oh, this is another extremely rare. It's a gem. It's Chilangia leucopetala. Um, Described by, by my friend Enrique Binnecker. Enrique Binnecker is 
and not the uh, he almost he he doesn't exist because every time that he goes to jungle, every time that he goes to forest, he finds a lot of new things. He is uh, some some mysterious thing that he finds a lot of new plants, a lot of new plants, and uh, he gonna watch us. Maybe he's watching the the. The meeting with us and it probably he is laughing a lot but um yeah so this is how tilanza leucopetala grows in nature in south brazil also an extremely rare plant extremely uh rare i i think that i could say one of the rarest tilanzias of south brazil one of the rarest ones This is one of my specimens of Chilanze leucopetala. It's it grows. I don't understand because, um, in fact, the point the, the point is the habitat of Chilanze leucopetala is restricted because the rock. I I heard the history by Leopoldo Vitek. He told me that's why I'm saying. Um, Leopoldo Vitek told me that the, the rock where we find Leucopetala, it's totally far from everything. It's just one rock in the middle of nothing. So the population of Leucopetala is really, really uh, rare, difficult. It's uh, problematic because, so by the point that it's uh, rupiculous, uh, we can't find the, another rocks in the area for it grows. So probably would be good a good idea to, to have a, a conversation talking about the if maybe in another areas um, we could replace some make some reproduction replace that in another area uh, trying to make uh, uh, to help the development of the plant the populations in nature. But definitely it's not a conversation for me because. As my um, snob friends, botanists would say, Nathan, you are not botanist. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, as I said, leucopetala uh, is very rare because there is just one rock for it grows. But in cultivation, it grows really well, really well. It's a really good plant to keep in cultivation. This is Tilanzia rodenardin. Uh, that fish, they also took it back to Chilanzia aeranthus. Definitely, I'm putting this here because also I don't accept the taxon um, to to send it back to put that to in aeranthus. I don't accept. I really think that it's a new fish, not a, a, a new. It's a different fish. This is Chilanzia as a new speech of Chilanzia. I, I had pictures of the flowers and uh, unfortunately I showed the pictures before to Ken and Paul, but unfortunately for our presentation I can't because I just don't want to have problems with my friends that they are botanists and maybe they, they're going to kill myself to, to make a public exposition of the pictures of a plant that is on the way to be described. <laughs> they're going to probably kill myself before that because with just with the picture of the plant, it's enough for they kill me. But let's pass over that. And so this is... A, very, very rare plant also. It came from South Brazil too. And it's rupiculous. And the populations of that plant are not big, really, really, really small populations. One specimen here and not the um, five meter, meters lead, uh, in the other position. And um, I, I know where is the population. And the, they are not big. They are not really big. Oh, this is the trick that I did uh, together with uh, 
Henrique Binnicke and Jonas Caldas to collect the lost ones. Those plants, Tilanzi Italbensis and Tilanzi Afonsoana, uh, were the, the, tax, the lost taxons of the Tilanzi for South Brazil. Um, those plants were lost for, not lost, they were described, but the um, botanists didn't go there to collect another time for, I think, over thir uh, 13 years. So uh, nobody has the plant uh, talking about, for example, Itaú base, just in the herbarium in Brazil. Just herbarium in Brazil had the plant. Uh, Afonsoana and Itaú Bensis. Chilanzi Afonsoana, the University of Rio Grande do Sul in, uh, in the city of Porto Alegre, uh, they had, a, I think, a, a, a clump of Afonsoana since the time that it was described. But um, Chilanzi and Itaú is just the material used to describe this, describe this fish. And um, like Exicata. And um, we made the trip because uh, Enrique told me, I asked him, Enrique, uh, which plants are you looking for now to make your works? And he said, oh, Nathan, I'm looking for a Fonsoana and Taubensis. And he lives in South Brazil. And I live in South East Brazil. It's a long time, a long way uh, up to really far from him. And I said, but why don't you have the plants by the point that it's from your state? And he said, Nathan, because it's really far, it's six hours by car, uh, we need to, to rent a, a boat. I stopped the conversation and I asked him, stop. Why don't you have the plan? Because you're not giving me an answer. And then he said, Nathan, it's not easy. Oh, Hick, I'm going to need to go there to, to resolve that problem with you because you are there and you're not finding the solution. I'm going to need to go with you guys. And he got like, oh, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going. And then, <laughs> and then uh, I put, I, I, I'm going to try to say in face uh, in the Portuguese way to say that I put the Facebook down and to found all the ways and we went I think one month later two months I don't remember one month one month later uh, to the place we rent I rent a, a, a boat we traveled six hours uh, until the place that is in the middle of the state of Rio Grande do Sul. We, we took the, the boat like uh, uh, 30 minutes in, uh, at a dam. And uh, when we found it, it was like the cliffs, the cliffs full of Chilanzi Talbensis, Chilanzi Afonsoana. And I thought with myself, Jesus, I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven because the cliffs are was full of Talbensis, like full. And we arrived exactly in the middle of the flower season. It was incredible because all the cliffs were like full of flowers, red flowers, and that color, the, the flower that you guys can see, but full, 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 was a paradise because the cliffs were like um, 50 meters, full of tilandias, full of dickias, full of uh, uh, ecmeas, um, full of bilberges, and uh, a paradise for all of us. And um, sinindias, orchids, orchids, I'm, I'm say, I think that I'm saying shit, because I, I don't remember orchids, but maybe it was. Yeah, so uh, oncidium flexuosum. Uh, a lot of oncidium, really big clumps of oncidium flexuosum in the area. And... Um, like, but it was, I never in my life, never before I saw so many lenses in just one place. It was like grass, really like grass, really. really.
and it, it grows like with the paradise because you guys can see the waterfall like falling and the the chilanzas, the clump of chilanzas all around that like the the the, the view of the should be my paradise, I don't know yours. <laughs> yeah, so this is Chilanzi Taubenses in cultivation. Um, this is a clown from that trip that we did. Um, yeah, so uh, I hope that you guys can see really well the details of the flowers. It's a big Tilandia. It's a really big talking about size of the flowers, size of uh, inflorescence, and the plant is a very different plant. It's a very, very different one. Yeah, Tilandia Fonsuana. Tilandia Fonsuana, uh, as I said, grows in the middle of uh, everything there that is the paradise. Uh, in the middle of Petsuos, in the middle of Taubens, in the middle of Tikias, in the middle of also a new variation of, uh, I don't know if you guys understand about cactus, but I'm gonna say the name um, that I just forgot, but, uh, oh Jesus, I forgot, but uh, never mind. We are talking about challenges. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is how the challenges grows in the cliffs in the area. So, we can see a lot of clumps of Chilanzia, Afonsuana, and Chilanzia Taubensis. But talking about the picture in your left, probably the picture in your left is a new area to Chilanzias because maybe you guys won't have an idea, but the size of the clumps are not big. Really young ones, really young. For when we compare for all, all the others, that is uh, bigger than one meter, maybe one meter and a half in some cases. Yeah, I remember the name of the cactus. The name of the cactus is Parodia claviceps variation claviceps. And that variation is a new variation that was described two years ago, and it's micro endemic to that dam, to that area. The place where it grows, no, it's a dam. In the past was just a cliff, a canyon, but they closed the, they stopped the river and made a dam. And with that, it's a shame because we lost half part of the populations of everything that I'm talking about, half part of the population. So we lost. How part of Chilanzia Taubens population, how part of Chilanzia Afonsuana, how part of Petsuozun, uh, a parodia claviceps, very claviceps, we lost it all. How part? So it's very sad when you guys, you guys arrive there, when we arrive there and we see uh, death that is a miracle, it's a paradise, but we understand that we are seeing just how part of it, what it were before. This is the habitat of Chilanzia uruguayensis. It's a new taxon too. Um, that area is, it's, I can't say that is, it's a cutting, but honestly, I don't know to use the correct expression in English for call that. Um, it, it looks like a savanna, but it, it, in fact, it's another name. In, I mean, in English, um, not in comparison with the one that we have in Northwest Brazil. It's another type of vegetation. And um, that area is the habitat. Uh, um, all pictures are mine, and uh, it's the habitat of Chilanzia Uruguayensis. Um, it's related to Laurentiana, and uh, in your left picture is the beginning of the rocks that are gonna make uh, the habitat to Uruguayans because it grows in, uh, it's in a on a type of cliffs. 
And in your right, you guys can see, uh, try to make attention because it's clumps of uh, Chilean Uruguayensis, not a lot, and also clumps of Chilean Recurvata, Rupiclos, the uh, Rupiclos. And uh, uh, in that area, yeah, there are a lot of other Chilanzias, but in that area it's special. Uh, the way down, we can find Chilanzia Loliacea also, but it, it growing as um, in, the, in, the, in the trees, in the area. This is the monkey, uh, Leopoldo Viteki, <laughs> trying to, to climb the mountain to collect the plant that I have. <laughs> Uh, he went there, and I was like, Leopold, you're going to fall from that mud, that, that thing, that cliff. And he, like, climbed the, the, the rock, the cliff, like a monkey, so, uh, so rapidly. And he collected the, some clumps, to, to one clump to give me, and another to keep in, in the collection, or the, the public collection. To more to the public collection. It's you guys can see. Hope that you guys can under can see um, some plumps here, here, here is recurvata. One here, one here, another here. Here is recurvata. Yeah, this is Chilanzia Uruguayensis. It's related to, as I said, Lorenziana. It grows making big clumps, big clumps. Ah, this is Chilanzia Casmophyta. Chilanzia Casmophyta is the rarest Chilanzia of South Brazil, the rarest one. Forget all others that I talk. In. This is the masterpiece. That is what they stay tell me. I cannot say that with um, uh, property, like being very, because I didn't visit the place. But who described the plant that it was a Rick Binica? Uh, sorry, also, I should give him the, 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 the power against the image, and I forgot to write, but he, he's watching us and won't be a problem. And he gave me, I have the, the, the permission right by him. And uh, this is the, the picture by him. And uh, he collected that plant in the border, the, the, the between the state of Rio Grande and the Sul and Santa Catarina, that is another paradise talking about bromeliads, but when you talk about the uh, rainforest in the special bromeliads, uh, the ones from South are really different. I mean, Rio Grande and the Sul, the last state of Brazil, because it's really, uh, it's much more cold. So um, Atlantic rainforests don't go really um, down to river and the soup. And that plant, Chilanzia Kasmofta, grows also in the cliffs, in the border of the cliffs. And uh, also, uh, Enrique almost uh, he told me that it was a very dangerous time uh, when he collected the plant for the first time because he could really um, felt them from the, the cliff to catch trying to catch the plant because it's really dangerous. And unfortunately, all other challenges that I'm showing you guys, I have uh, all others. Um, it's the public collection of uh, the University of Rio Grande do Sul have. Uh, other collectors in South Brazil now have. We share material with, um, with some uni and other universities. In, my friend shared the, the material. So some some places there are Chilanzi Talbens and Chilanzi Afonsuana, but Casmofta, uh, no, nobody has, nobody. So 
because Kazmovta need a special condition. The in about what my friend told me, Eric Pinica, um, it's um, it's very very complicated in comparison with all other chilanzias that I showed you guys. Chilanzia, uh, Kazmovta is the worst talking about situation, the worst one. Yeah. Probably that is the material used to make the description of this piece. Neolotipus. This is, oh, uh, this is oh, what I did. Um, sorry, what I did. Yeah, this is um, I I did uh, I I forgot to to make a translation of the, the last PowerPoint, um, but this is some part of the archives uh, where Ivo made his draws of, uh, with Tilandias, and this is how he organized the collection in 1979. So. Uh, Almost in that past, uh, in the time, uh, he organized the collection all with pictures and um, we drawing each plant. Uh, he, he was a very organized person. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, we finished it. As, as I told, as I told, uh, Ken, as it told Poe, as it told Barry, I talk as how, and uh, I could speak, 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 and never end because I really like to talk about that. And um, yeah, so I'm thankful and really thankful to you guys all to have heard me talk, make so much noise, and um, hope that you guys are gonna watch me another time because maybe we're going to have another meeting. Wow. Spectacular, Nathan. Really Thank great. You. Um, Thank you. There, there are a couple questions in chat. And uh, this, there was a, uh, are you able to get on chat and take a look at them, Nathan? Yeah. Let me just, um, yeah. Let me just say this in the meantime. Nathan is going to be going to on a special trip to Western Brazil uh, just in a few days. And he's going to take extensive photos. And we're going to have him back early next year to show us his photos of his trip. But uh, I would like to make a special request that if anyone feels like helping to finance Nathan's trip, you can... You probably find him on PayPal at his Yahoo uh, his email address. Otherwise, you can send money to me and I'll send it to him. I'm going to commit $50 myself towards Nathan's trip. Thank you, Nathan. It was a great, great talk. Thank you really, Barry. And I hope that I can meet you guys a lot more times, as I said and as I told Barry. Um... I'm making uh, in the next days. I'm making a new expedition to uh, West Brazil, and soon we're gonna have new materials. To sh I'm gonna have new materials to share with you guys. Fantastic! Yeah. Thank you, Barry. No problem. And oh, wait, wait, one question. So, is your PayPal hooked up to your Yahoo email? Yeah, yeah, okay. it is. Okay. Thank you. And I'll take care of the, the you know, we're going to send you a, a stipend or whatever you call it, an honorarium. Yeah. You do, I'll get the uh, Nels to put it together. It'll take a few days. No, that's okay. That's okay. Let me ask you, what about uh, Pedro? Pedro? Pedro's in great shape. I talked to him last night. He's on. You know, he's with us right now. He's moving. Oh. Pedro, unmute yourself. Is he there? Yes, he is. Bye. Anyways, 
you know, Pedro's the one who recommended you for this. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. Pedro said, "Hello, hello, hello everybody." Hey, hey, Pedro. How are you? Very nice to meet you. I was hey. taking care of the family because it's late here in the Rio right now. But I was, I was re hearing the the end of, of Nathan's uh, presentation. Very nice. Very. Very uh, big pleasure to meet you, all of you, Cam, Paul, Barry. Thank you a lot for the opportunity to introduce you. Nathan's uh, legacy, very old school approach for a young guy, very good in Chilenza, the best collection of Brazilian Chilenza in the whole world. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, and uh, we would like to talk a little bit because we know that we are talking for several people all around the world, and uh, it's such a great joy to meet you, all of you, especially the La Balona Valley Bermuda Society people, because we have the opportunity to discuss discuss a problem that is is running again, the extractivism again uh, against the wild populations of Chilenzia for the illegal trade, and uh, we know that uh, the best way. To, to fight against it is with the communication and with the, with the very good uh, meeting with the, with the people all around the world, sharing good vibes, good joy, and the right information to buy just uh, legally produced challenges in nurseries. We have uh, wonderful examples in, in the, the US of the people that have been in the last decades, uh, growing chilenses, pure species and hybrids, uh, like Frank Messina, Paul Eisley, uh, Pam Coyd, uh, Dennis Katkar, a great friend of mine. And I remember uh, like almost 20 years ago when I was in Sarasota, Florida, with a, such a wonderful bromidic collector there, Wally Berg, the late Wally Berg. And Wally said, Pedro, the future of bromeliads in horticulture are the Chilean hybrids, and he I, and I was I wasn't uh, trusting him that much because we had the time just a few hybrids made by human hands, and now we can see such a wonderful uh, new varieties coming from hybridization, ex situ hybridization. So it's important for us to keep in mind that it's possible to grow plants commercially by seeds and uh, we can, we can uh, let people know that it's uh, uh, our communication, our behavior, our knowledge, our joy and our friendship shared that's going to be the best attitude to fight against strategism for the next generations. Okay, oh. it's such a it's such a good pleasure to meet you all of you, and uh, I can I can feel that we have uh, groups of of Brazilian enthusiasts like uh, the group in California, the group in Rio de Janeiro, and uh, we're gonna be a great opportunity to, to keep this uh, communication and the, to keep these lives. Thank you, La Bellona Valley Society, Brazilian Society. Pedro, Pedro. Very well said. Thank you for putting that together. Pedro, one other thing. Uh, I would like to offer to put up a Facebook page for Brazilian nurseries. And I will run the thing. You can be the co-admin. If you can find Bromeliad nurseries, I mean other kinds of plant nurseries in Brazil who would like to be represented on Facebook, you yeah, let me know. Let, let's, get, let's help the legal legal plant growers flourish and I will help yeah. promote them. Okay. The best idea is to, to keep everything open and to, yeah. to give yeah. light to the things, to let people know. And uh, we let, because many, in many places, people don't know that they are buying illegally uh, collected plants. Some yeah. people, some friends of mine in Spain, in Italy are showing me pictures of, of very endangered plants that came from Brazil, and they don't know. They ask me, are these uh, plants came from 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 uh, illegal, illegally trade? 
And I said, probably because nobody's growing them. Yeah, because you, you don't have, you can't have mature plants that take 20 or 30 years and there's no nursery producing them. So they're, they're extracted, they're stolen from the forest. Yeah. It's got, but it's, got, it's got to be stopped. And usually half of them don't survive. Yeah. Yeah. No, many times yeah, like, for to have one plant for sale in Europe, you lose two, three, sometimes 10 plants. And, uh, well, but anyway, I think that it's a, what, what is uh, such a, an opportunity is to, to say that uh, we have a wonderful job of the Chilean growing in, in the United States, mainly yeah. California. So yeah. uh, to show up what, what, what uh, uh, Paul Isley did, Pam, Pam Coy did, and Frank Messina, and all, yeah. all of the guys that are doing, shows that uh, we can do it in Brazil, we can do it in Mexico, Guatemala. I have been in Chilean nurseries in Guatemala with, with uh, thousands, yeah, hundreds of thousands of wild collected Yonantas, and we don't need to do it. We, we need to, to let people know that it's possible to start from seeds. No, thank you. Thank you, Pedro. Yeah. So maybe there's some questions in chat that Nathan wants to answer. I don't know. Yeah, I saw just one question, Barry. Delphine, um, uh, he, Delphine said, um, are many of the Chilean species you have collected in danger? The biggest part of what I have uh, talking about challenges, not the biggest part, but a lot of them are in danger. Uh, as, as I said in my presentation, um, I just can't have the ones that I have because I inherited one, two, two collections and I received it from friends of mine that collect that legally because they are yeah. potent like that. They shared with me. Otherwise, I couldn't. Yes, Barry, um, help me here, because I think that, it, that is just one question. Yeah, I think you're right. Don't worry about it. I think yeah. people are tired. I know you're tired. Well, it was a spectacular uh, presentation. And, of course, we will be waiting breathlessly, <laughs> breathlessly <laughs> for your slide. Take lots of travel slides, too, for the, for the trip. And, uh, yeah, I yeah. hope so. I hope that to the, the end of the year, I can make more at least three, three trips. Let's see how it's going to be because then, whoops, with Corona, it's going to be a difficult, difficult yeah. point. Yeah, I got you. What state are you going to? The state? Uh -huh. I'm, going to I'm going to West Brazil. Um, and then I think... I gotta, that I'm gonna try to organize some trip also to São Paulo, but to São Paulo I'm gonna visit the most two collectors, collectors that they have plants, uh, mm -hmm. and um, they I can make some exchange with them. But as I said, it's very very difficult because you, as I said, I can make some exchange. I can put more plants in collection just with data. So if it's there. They don't have information of the plant. Uh, I can I just can't. Even if it's something good, something I mean, something rare. Oh, some of some of them have for over than 20 years, plants 30 years, and um, I can I just can't. It's very sad because I cannot uh, make a mess on my archives. Um, talking, I'm talking about genetic. I'm, I must be sure that the material that I have came from the population that is no, uh, there are red no, and uh, they have the tails. So maybe in future, uh, we have some, some work related to um, reproduction and to make some, some project of reforestation or introduction of plants in nature. And uh, that's very important to keep the details of the plants so it's not uh, that easy to, to find new plants, the orchids. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, you, know, you, are, you are still young enough. You could start one of these nurseries. 
And uh, you and yeah. I will talk. No, I'm serious. You will talk about it. Maybe we can get some foreign investors to back you up. It would be amazing. It would be amazing because it's really what I want to do. Uh, for example, Chilanzi and Reclinata, it's, it's really complicated the situation that we are living because, uh, you know, I visited the Chilanzi and Reclinata population uh, for the first time eight, nine years ago, eight yeah. years ago. And if you we visited, I visited the population now, and uh, I could say that the non population lost at least half part of the population. Yeah. Lost. yeah. And I no. know who is, I know who did, I know yeah. how did, and I have, um, because I went there with Orlando Breath, and we saw, I saw the difference between yeah. before and after. Yeah. But, you know, if you had a proper nursery license and you were licensed with the government, then you could take a little bit more legally, reproduce the plants and sell them to the world. I think it would be a great advantage you have with these limited limited populations. But we need to do it legally, you know, all legal. We'll talk. Yeah. What city do you live in, Nathan? What? What city do you live in? Give me just a second because the battery of my notebook, I thought that would be enough and it's not enough. I just need to reconnect a second, please. So anyways, guys, it was a very good talk. You, you know, it's a little difficult with the, with the uh, accent, but he, he worked through it. Yeah, he really did well. Yeah, I enjoyed it immensely. Very organized. Well, and also we're we're learning about Talantia that nobody else, you know, you would have to go to the botanist at the universities, go there, form a relationship, just to hear any of this. So okay. he's sort of the, he's the bridge between these two worlds. So. Uh, Niels asked me about the state where I live. I live in Metropolis, in the state of Rio de Janeiro. Oh, I have in a, the middle. I have some friends there. I'll I'll send you a message and ask you if you know them later on. In Petropolis. Petropolis, yeah. Uh -huh. If you have friends here, if they are related with plants, I'm not sure. If yeah. They, they are I know they they all. For sure. No, they're not related with plants. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. But it's gonna be a pleasure. Yeah. Maybe I know them. Maybe I know them. There's, I've been, you know, I lived in Brazil and I've been to Brazil, oh, 15 times since I lived there in the 70s. But um, I was very uh, disturbed when I went to uh, Minas Gerais in, uh, um, it's a town that starts with I, something like Itaim, Itachim, or something. Itachin, then, uh, but, but Itachin is in Bahia, the state of Bahia. Itachi. Oh, then it's not there. But, but it's in Minas Gerais, this town, and it's near it's near the Rio Bahia, but to the west of that. And um, I went there in, in 1999, and I was looking at cactus, but I also saw a Talanzi there. Um, I can't remember which one it was, but, but I went back um, in 2008, and the the man that owns the property um, destroyed most of the plants because underneath is all granite and he wanted to sell the granite to make a mine and make money off of it. So I, that happens everywhere in Brazil. Well, yeah. they, do, they do it in Mexico. They bulldoze yeah. roads through, through populations of Talanzi without blinking. Yeah. And what's so, yeah, yeah. what's so unfortunate is if there were some nurseries set up that would come in and rescue the plants before they're destroyed. I mean, yeah, I have for decided... example. Sorry. No, it's okay. If uh, if somebody wants to do that in Brazil, it's almost impossible. No, I know. I know they make it. It's it's illegal because of the federal laws. But in Mexico, it's a little more legal. I had this idea forty years ago to set up micro nurseries to rescue plants, but you can't do it. All the laws, you, know, you have to pay people off, and and the laws are insane. But but uh, I noticed when I was when I was in uh, Milagres in Bahia, I noticed that people there were taking 
uh, all sorts of plants and selling them on the side of the road, which yeah. is also illegal. Yeah, I right. saw that. I saw. I don't know when you went, but I think maybe there is. There are some years between that. How, when did you go? I think I was there in 2012. In the same year that I went there. Yeah. In the same year, and I saw that. Yeah. Is I that, saw that. Too. Is that where Talanzia milagrensis comes from? From Milagres? Who can answer your question? <laughs> I don't know that he gonna like that. But it's Pedro. Pedro is with us. And he can answer perfectly your question because Pedro is the one that found the milagres. Oh. I, I think Pedro's taking care of his family. Yeah. His, his video, <laughs> no, his, his video is empty. Here he is. Oh, Pedro, Pedro is here. Oh, here? hi, Pedro. <laughs> we had a question about milagrensis, Talancia milagrensis. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't I collected. I collected. I did a collection trip for the Elton and uh, Lemmy and Marigo, Bromeliad in Brazilian wilderness in 1993 with my great friend, the late uh, photographer uh, Luis Claudio Marigo. And uh, we collected the Alcantaria Naumi and Chilense Milagrances in the Milagres region. Uh, to answer Leos, that, that was, were, was answering. And uh, that's a wonderful diversity region wonderful. For, for Chileans. But in, in the Northeastern, we have Chile many regions like that, wow. full of new species. Beautiful, beautiful area. But um, answering your question, um, I think that I it's not good to put uh, Pedro in that position. Yeah. Because uh, me, me, <laughs> for no, me, no, we, because... We, we... Nathan and I discussed this. We weren't going to talk about locations. No, he did, no, yeah. he did, that's, well, important, it, that's important to talk about that because no, no. the exact location, the exact rock where I found it, it's a, a secret that I just share with the right scientists that are working on that. No, I get it. The, the, the location is lost. But it's you're, a you're, because sorry, if, if some some extractivists, some bad people go there. They can destroy half of the of the population. 